Hi, Jim, and whoever else is listening. Um, this is a little comparison of the performance between two uh, leading web frameworks. One is the Rails, another one is the emerging framework called Phoenix, which runs on uh, Elixir language, which compiles down to Erlang machine bytecode. I'm going to create two applications using uh, generators and scaffolding uh, scaffolds uh, for both uh, platforms, and then I'm just going to run the comparison. So on the left, I'm going to have Rails. I'm going to call it uh, Rails Books minus D Postgres. Uh, that to make sure that both both applications use the same database. So there's no like no difference in the database. Here, I'm going to create Phoenix Phoenix New Phoenix Books application. Doing the same thing, fetching the dependencies, it, it is very, very similar to Rails. Uh, then on, in Rails, I'm going to uh, Rails generate scaffold. I already did these steps just to make sure, so that I'm just going to copy them. Generate scaffold book with title and with author. It's very basic. Whoops. I think I missed something. Oh, that's right. I forgot to switch to the directory. Rails generate scaffold. This creates the controller, the migration, the model, and, and everything. So raid db migrate. Then here I'm going to just uh, do the same with Phoenix. Um, Phoenix books mix um, Phoenix generate HTML. Uh, HTML is a scaffold generator. Same thing. Model name, table name, uh, and default column type is string, but you could you could do string, doesn't matter. And author string. So this generates first of course it compiles the whole application and then and does then does it all. In here, um, yeah database doesn't exist. Rate db create um, doesn't matter. Rate db migrate I'm doing this in parallel to save time. So here, uh, now I need to do... Um, at this point I need to tweak something in the application because uh, in, in the Phoenix application uh, the configuration by default uh, doesn't use correct uh, username for the Postgres and, and everything. So that, and I need to make a small change to my routes as suggested by the generator, go to my routes and pipe that through the regular browser scope. Uh, I'm not going to get into much detail about this, I'll just run the stuff. Uh, mix uh, ecto migrate. This is uh, this is the f oops, doesn't exist. Ecto setup. Okay, um, I have migrated. Now I've created a table and I'm going to seed the table with three records. And to save time again, I'm going to open seeds file. And I'm just going to create some code from my external editor. So this is the Phoenix's way to create records. I'm inserting stuff into, into my repository and this is just structs with data. Then I'm going to run it, mix ecto Actually, mix run. What? Oh, that's right. Since I copied the code, my namespace is different. Phoenix books. Phoenix books. Phoenix books. Uh, I, I know I could have done the mass replace, but it doesn't matter. Phoenix books. Uh, run it again. And oh, all right, it's inserted. Now I'm going to do the same with Rails. Open it in the editor. Open up the seeds. Um, and going to copy some code uh, into here. Then I'm just going to run it. Rake db seed. Great. So now I can run a Rails server and I can run mix. Phoenix server. Uh, they run on different ports. Uh, Phoenix board. What? Yeah. 
I forgot to terminate the previous instance. Phoenix server. Okay, both are running. Now I'm going to take the browser, one of them, and uh, just grab this empty tab and demonstrate that both applications do indeed work. This is the brand new Rails application. Go directly to books and see it, it works. This is a basic scaffold. I didn't write a single line of this code. Then go to Word 4000. Again, books. This is the Phoenix application. Uh, you may notice it looks nicer, but that's not the point of this, this test. Now let's test the performance. Uh, I'm going to split the terminals like so. I'm not going to run these tests in parallel. This is just to illustrate them side by side. So here, I'm going to use the AB tool. It's Apache Bench. I'm going to make 1,000 requests with a concurrency of 50. Uh, Rails uh, development server runs with a concurrency of 5 uh, in single thread, as, as Ruby is not, is not really a multi-threaded thing. So I'm going to run this on Rails. And it's going to run 1,000 requests to this controller uh, 50 at a time. And Puma server queues them up and runs them five at a time on, on the back end. I could tweak that and maybe get better performance, but uh, my previous experimentation didn't, uh, didn't show any significant enhancement there. So, almost done. Okay, so the final result is requests per second, 28 requests per second. Pretty impressive, right? Uh, for a development server. I understand that production, uh, Rails in production runs much faster, and, and that's okay. So in here, I'm going to point uh, the same command on a different port, port 4000. I'm going to run 1000 requests, uh, again, 50 at a time, and it's done. I didn't even finish talking, and the request per second is 1800. I can do it again, and it's going to be 1600 and again, it's going to be 1700, so it fluctuates. I can probably do safely 90 requests per second and do a thousand, because I can, and I'm getting 2300 requests per second. So it's roughly, roughly eight times faster. Uh, there you go. The point of this is that this Phoenix framework uh, is much faster, uh, I mean, it's much more performance than Rails out of the box without any kind of caching or anything, and uh, it is a pleasure to develop in. It uses the functional programming language with the immutable data, data, structs, uh, data structures. So it's, it doesn't, I mean, doesn't com compromise developer productivity uh, for performance or or, or so they say. At least, anyway, this is, I hope this was interesting. Thank you.